I was looking at the QBI for the FDII. When they're talking about QBI for FDII, is that U.S. tangible assets that's going into the calculation? Or just the U.S. companies tangible assets? Or what tangible assets? So then when we're talking about QBI, there's one type of QBI that goes into the FDI, and that's the U.S. tangible assets. But then you're also taking into account the guilty what, what you're describing, let's say we have a U.S. company and it has a CFC. The U.S. company, of course, can have its own, you know, fixed assets. You know, it can have a building. It can have equipment in that building. It can have, uh, you know, it's, it has an active business. It also owns a CFC, and that CFC has its own business. The U.S. company, from you know, as a result of selling, uh, let's in fact let's take uh, let's take Apple as a uh, a good example here. I think what you said for Apple was that anything that's sold into the Americas is going to be part of Apple Inc. Okay, so sales made by the U.S. parent to Canada, to Mexico, to Brazil, to Argentina. The U.S. company is making those sales. And as a result, that will generate an FDII deduction for the U.S. parent. Now, at the same time, the CFC, which in Apple's case is AOI, it is selling to everywhere outside of the Americas it will cause, of course, guilty. So when Apple at the top files its Form 1120, the corporate income tax return, it will calculate an FDII deduction that relates to its own sales, and it will calculate, uh, it will have a guilty inclusion and then it will take the 50% deduction against that, uh, that guilty. And it will end up, of course, with the taxable income, which reflects both the FDII deduction and the guilty. So the same US company can have both. It's, not, it's, it's the different transactions that the parent has or that the subsidiary has cause an FDII effect, a, a guilty effect.